Hello everyone, it's Mike here, and welcome to a new type of thing. It's a tutorial for Simutrons, pack 128, beginner's guide. Um, but it'll get you started with Simutrons even if you use a different pack. So, uh, that's why I started on this screen first. It's um, a little bit different than where I normally start, which is in-game. We want to go ahead and select our pack. It'll load up. And now we're in the game. And it would appear that the bug where there's no music is still around. It's okay, I can add it in post actually. Um, either as a MIDI or something else. Oh, no, it's working. There it is. really loud in my ears so I'm sorry if I started to shout but yeah no we definitely got it could actually just be uh turned down a little bit anyways I was having some issues with it before so we'll just fix it up right there and um yeah anyways Let's go back to the uh, main menu. So, when you first start the game, you'll start here, like this. And so if we, um, if we choose new game, we, uh, we can choose a map, we can get a different random map. This is basically your map seed, and so, um, if you know anything about random number generation, this will give you the same type of map every time. Which is nice. Um, this is your map size. You can make it any size you want. And, yeah. The bigger it is, the more... It's just going to put more strain on your machine. And you can actually see the size right here. It's going to take in RAM. So, like, if you had a 1024 by 1024 or something. Or 152, I guess is what it wants to give me. Um, it's gonna be 79 megabytes, which isn't too bad for most modern machines, but uh, we'll start out with a small map Because this will be plenty of size to start out um, We'll go ahead and leave all the other defaults, but you can change all this stuff and then actually there's a button here landscape settings That lets you kind of change how the landscape forms and how the uh, different biomes form There's a lot of values in here. We're not gonna go over those um this allows you to change if you're going to follow the timeline or if all the vehicles are available. So if you uncheck this, all the vehicles are available all the time. And all the factories are available all the time. If it's checked, then it has to follow the year. And beginner mode... Um... Higher transport fees and disabled just in time. I'm not sure what this does. Either enables or disables beginner mode. But we'll just leave it um, like this for now. And in settings, it'll actually bring up a ton of settings that affect the game in multiple ways. And yeah. If you want to know what all these do, maybe a different video. But this is just a beginner's guide, so we won't go into those right now. But they are there. If you want to look at them and change them and try to figure out what they do. Uh, you can also load a save game. Or you can uh, load a scenario, which these are sometimes fun. Um, these are different scenarios, kind of like missions that you can do. There aren't a lot of them. And some of them aren't as good as others. But they're there. Oh, let me check this out as well. What else can you do for main menu? You can also load a game, load a scenario here, and play online. And I have a different video kind of explaining how to do that. Alright, so we're just going to go ahead and start a game. There we go. For whatever reason, we have lots of desert. Um, I'm not used to working on a map like this, so let's see if we can get a new one. Just because I am... Really not used to that. It's 
kind of weird. I wonder if desert has been added. Because I don't remember desert from the past. Anyways, here's a map. This is kind of what you'll start with. Um, but today, we aren't going to go over too much about the map. If you right click and drag, you'll be able to move. Uh, I think if you use the arrow keys, yeah, you can kind of pan around the map. But uh, I usually use right click, it's a lot faster. Scroll wheel zooms in and out. And yeah, so that's the basics. If you click on things, it'll tell you stuff. Um, so you have all your tools up here. These are landscape tools, allow you to raise lower terrain. Um, build artificial terrain, which makes uh, steep slopes. Instead, these will make soft. Pretty easy. Um, oh, and then you can also convert climates, apparently. So that's nice. I didn't realize that. Um, you can also raise the water by a level and drain the water by a level. That seems... Just a little bit dangerous. Oh, okay, if it's a basin. Uh, it's not a basin, apparently. Well, I don't see any basins, so... What about this one? There you go. So, yeah, you can, like, lower the water level or raise it. I can't raise it back to where it was, but, um... You get the picture. Yeah, it's not too happy about it now. Alright. Um, what other tools do we have up here? You have your basic construction tools, which let me just show you these real fast. Uh, we'll go ahead and use basic road tools. Um, so how you use this stuff and build roads is you click in one spot, and then you can click wherever you want to build it, but if you hold the button down, you can move it around. And then also, if you press control... Uh, while you're doing this, it tends to create straight roads. So like if we went over here, see how it's not... Usually it would connect back up to that road beside me, but since I'm holding control, it tries to go straight. Same for this, actually. But yeah. So those are the road construction tools. You can also just click and drag, and that'll do the same thing. But then there's point to point as well. And that's useful if you want to go long distances that you can't see. Say like I want to go from here to down here. Can't see both spots at the same time, but I can get it to kind of come down. And control won't help me because it's too far away. You usually use control for uh, shorter distances, but there you go. So, what we have now is, um, oh, that's basic construction tools. Uh, you got some other stuff. There's special construction tools. We won't get into those right now, but you can change which player you are and who you're acting as. Always useful. Um, destroy, remove, just lets you destroy stuff. Line management is something we'll come back to later. But when you um, want to make routes that you're going to go to often, you're going to want to make it a line. And here you can see all lines and you can sort by vehicles. and Oh, there's a bunch of stuff. And there's going to be a lot of information in here. Um, lists give you different lists of everything. So if we wanted a list of all factories on the map, you can get the factory list. There they are. Quite a few, actually. Which is nice. Um, tourist destinations is another interesting one. And yeah. There's the mailbox. This will come up with uh, any events that ever happen. And it'll keep that. Also in your options, you can have pop-up boxes for different things. You can also turn off pop-up boxes if you're having things that happen. But you don't really care about them. This is the place you can turn those off. So like... Uh, this is a pop-up box that goes away after so long, and this one you actually have to close, and then these are the types of things. And if you check these boxes off, then they uh, completely turn off and don't actually tell you anything. Um, then we have the finances screen, probably the most important window for you to know about. Um, in this screen, it gives you all the money. And the most important ones are cash flow and um, overall operational profit. So operational profit is how much money you're actually making um, and not based on whatever you buy. Cash flow is where the money is going um, and it includes via everything. It's just everything, including stuff that you're buying that month. 
so you have to take that into account. And then there's some other useful things here that you might look at every once in a while. It can also be sorted by what type of vehicles are out there. So pretty nice, and you can choose between years or months just to see what your money's doing. You can take a screenshot, you can pause the game by pressing this button. Nothing will run. Fast forward with this button. Uh, help. It, uh... I've never actually read the how to play section. It might be pretty good. Um... But yeah, look at look at all this stuff. I might I might have a read through that before I try to explain too much on a few things. But anyways, keyboard bindings is something that I do come to often because you can um, basically these give you all the different shortcuts, and shortcuts are good, especially because they allow you to do some things that you can't just click on. Um, there's zoom in, zoom out, sliced map view, which uh, shows you only one layer of the map. So it can be nice. Uh, there's keyboard buttons for going up or down a layer. Showing the grid can also be nice. It gives you nice grid lines for everything. And then this will rotate the map. So if you wanted to look at it from a different angle, you have that. And I think that's just about all of the buttons. Um, apparently it has this too. And this is only for pack 128. But if you're using a different pack, a lot of the buttons should be the same. Um, there's only like two more things to go over here. And then probably be done for this episode. So you have your mini map. Um, probably the most important screen, especially if you have a larger map than this. Because it shows you everything. And um, you can actually move around by clicking in this window and dragging. And it'll move you around the map, which is good. If you hover over um, factories on the mini-map, it'll show you kind of like their names. And because I often have it enabled, it might even go, okay, it's not, which is good. So if I were to check networks and factories, there we go. If I hover over oil field, as you can see, there's a small, I don't know if you can see it, but there's a small white line going from this oil field down to this power station. And so if I um, come over to the oil field, is it right here? It's right in here somewhere. There it is. Um, and click on it. You can actually see right here that there are little arrows and it says where who the consumer is. And if you click this arrow, It'll take you to the consumer's position. And there's also a supplier on the consumer, which will take you back. So that's pretty cool. Also, if you click this little window... Here, let me go away. If you click this window, it'll take you back. Um, also, these arrows obviously take you to their different locations. And then you can get details, which is just a fun little kind of like info script. And a chart, which tells you where the products are going, how they're being delivered, and how effective that is. Which can be useful. I don't use it much. Um, there's also Production Boost, which is from passengers, and um, well, there's a whole bunch of factors that go into this. As you can see, Demand, Passengers, and Mail are the three major ones. Uh, electricity also is a major one. For Boost. And that boosts the output of that factory. Alright, I think... I mean, there's other stuff here, too, that you can click on, and it does different things to the minimap. Um, kind of nice. It'll highlight different things. Industry list will just give you a list of the color codes of the different industries. And... Don't know what color codes does, but there you go. It gives you this little thing for color codes. Sure. Okay, let's go ahead and go into the main options menu. And here you have the option to select your language. I'm on English, obviously. Um, players. You can add AI players into your game. And uh, why don't I just do that? So let's add a passenger AI. I'm just going to click this box right here. And you can add other ones too. You just have to select from here. I must have other scripts. 
enabled? Sure. Do we have any scripts? Okay, we don't have any scripted AI. Oh. Well, we really don't have any scripted AI. Uh, anyways. Let me try... To get into the game again. Uh... <laughs> You get to see my nice now on Twitch thing. All right, come on, come back. There we go. All right, you guys get to see this again. Okay, so don't choose scripted AIs if you have an option, unless if you for sure have scripted AIs. Um, let's go ahead and uh, start the game again. Oh, one thing about the uh, map seed is actually that uh, it won't put cities and factories in the same spot. It'll just give you the same map. Okay. So now that we have that, we can go back into here. You can also switch players by uh, pressing the arrow pretty fast. Public service actually gives you these fancy tools, but we won't look into those. We'll go back into the human player. And also public service is not allowed to have its own vehicles. But it can put down stations and roads. Um, so let's go ahead and put a passenger AI back in here. And if we fast forward, they should come up soon. And I'll just go over the other stuff in here that you might not know. Player color. You get to choose your color that you are. Um, display. A whole bunch of nice things in here. For whatever reason, my game is running at 10 FPS, apparently. Wonderful. That's just what I wanted. Not really, but I don't know how to fix it. Um, then you can also make a new game, load game. You can save the game. Maybe. There we go. I just have so many save games. Um, yeah. As you can see, I tried to do this before, and I didn't have my mouse on screen, which really makes it bad. I don't know what we just saved the map as, but we saved it apparently. All right, and I think I think that's what I wanted to show. Oh, oh, we've got tricky transport is beginning to really go here, but this is what the AI will do. Just as an example, they'll uh they'll begin doing whatever service you ask them to do. So this guy was a passenger AI and so he's doing passenger transport. Often though, especially in pack 128 these guys will go bankrupt. So we can actually look at him, which is pretty cool. If we go into players, we can see how much they're worth. And, um, yeah, he spent some money. And I can't tell if it's going up or down. It seems to be going down. Anyways, you'll see public service in the negative a lot of the time, but they never go bankrupt, which is nice. If they went bankrupt, then all these roads would be gone. Anyways. I think that'll be it for this episode. So, thank you all so much for watching. Um, stick around if you actually want to see how to start the game proper with actually building stuff. Um, I know I've done it before, but I'm going to do it now in pack 128. Which is a little bit harder to get started with. Um, but it's not too different. It's a lot the same. It's just prices are a lot more tight, and so you need to be more careful about how you do things. But we'll get into that in the next episode. Um, and we'll probably switch maps, because I don't like this desert. So I'll figure out a way to get rid of it, I guess. Yeah. So until next time, I will see you all later. Bye-bye!